Okay, so for a change, let's do one jaw surgery. Uh, 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 a lot of times, uh, orthodontics has a lot of input into this, and uh, uh, the suggestion was not to do upper jaw. Uh, we thought about it, we discussed it. A patient uh, decided not to do it for, you know, just, uh, it was close to ideal position on the cephalometric analysis, uh, 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 and uh, uh, facially, uh, if we look at her uh, lip angle and uh, tooth position, uh, even when she smiles, uh, it looked very nice. So this is very important. She was prepared for three piece lift work. That's what I really like to see uh, in preparation orthodontically for three piece lift work is those mesial distal spaces. That's the name for this. Uh, that means that orthodontist makes a space here. So when I do the osteotomy, I can take that protrusive upper incisors, which are often like this, and bring them back to change that and then move the whole jaw forward so the nasal base come forward as well. Which a lot of those patients need uh, with a uh, poor developed nasal base. So this is her pre-orthodontic treatment. She was prepared for three piece with four, uh, but we just didn't do it. So now this is her um, low jaw advancement only. So she, and you see much less swelling. She didn't really swallow a whole lot. This is about five days after surgery. Smiling, that's her bite after. So she's class one, class one, and that's pretty much all she wanted. So not a whole lot of change, but just you know, much better uh, support for her lower face. And uh, we opened up the bite because we brought this lower jaw from deeper bite and behind uh, to the forward position. She also had a little chin lengthening as well and a little bit more. So uh, I like to do chins about four millimeters at the most because then it makes that natural uh, line. Uh, uh, she's uh, like 30, 